I'm just, I'm, I'm going to say that I'm having a bad week and thinking about people that are also having some life-changing medical shit going on, but the rat is my key story. <laughs> All right. Uh, rat oh my is God. a situation. I'm so triggered now. Yeah, like I'm every time I go outside about. with JMO, I'm like, oh my God, he found a rat. The amount I'm of dead animals. I'm just excited to hear about how it revived itself when you went All to right. move it. <laughs> now she believes in, in Jesus. <laughs> No, no. Can we just open the, can we just open the show? No. I believe in the, the opposite of Jesus with this rat situation. <laughs> like, there is and the on the third Jesus. day, the rat rose. There is, no, it literally was the third day. Holy shit. Okay. Hi. Welcome to Saturdays and Seltzers. My name is Kendra Middleton. And as always, I am joined by my co host, Haley DeMello, and our producer, Tyler. We're hopping into our HLH here, but we're throwing it a little out of whack this week. If you're new here, uh, we usually catch up with something called our HLH, which is our high of the last week, low of the last week, and hero of the last week. We're talking about my low. Um, First, I just want to say, like, if you are going through some life-changing medical shit like me right now, I'm thinking about you. Mental health is always a huge thing here. Take care of yourself. Like, I cannot prioritize that enough this week without vomiting. So take care of yourself. That being said, the rat situation. For some reason, my yard is an animal graveyard, and I don't know why. I have found dead, multiple dead birds, multiple dead rats. Like, so far, I've just been putting them in or covering them with flower buckets (laughs) so that they can decay in a flower bucket, but I don't have any more. Do you have a shovel? Yes. Just wait. Did you dig a hole? Key part of the story. Tyler. Key part. (laughs) So I've just been covering them with flower buckets and just saying, like, fuck it at this point. But this week was not a dead rat that I found. Jackson literally pulled this thing out of the flowers in my yard. Fucking master splinter ass rat. Like, this fucker is huge. I have a picture, but I'm not going to make you guys look at this. And Jackson. I would like to see it, actually. All right, I'll text it to you. I've um, seen it. Jackson decided to curb stomp this thing, like, full on. Like, full on. I, know, Jackson. Was, I didn't know he had that in him. Me? Oh, he got either. that dog in him. No, he got that dog no. in him. I did not know. I've this in I, actually Jackson, I kind of owe you an apology. Jackson's my dog. He I thought this entire time was just a giant pussy, right? Uh he didn't even bite this thing. He full on just front pawed, nice. like slammed it. And so after like three days, I was like, all right, I got to get this thing out of my yard. Like he keeps trying to go do whatever. I don't need him to get an infection. I got to suck it up. But the thick, the kicker is I live by myself. And so I had to do this all on my own and I'm standing there and I'm like, all right, I'm going to take my snow shovel. I also just sent you that picture and I'm going to, you know, get it on the shovel. If you're watching this on YouTube, this is, this is great great commentary and just like get it pick it up and like tilt it towards the back of the shovel and then i'm gonna wrap the trash bag around the shovel and then just lift the handle of the shovel up so it falls into the trash bag after about like three minutes of me trying to like get this thing onto the shovel without touching it it lets out a squeak Mm. (laughs) (laughs) after three days of this fucking thing being in my yard just no, it, it maybe went three feet between the curb stomp and death. Can you give us a your closest impersonation of this week, please? It was no, I can't because it's haunting my nightmares at the moment. <laughs> um, and so it starts squeaking. So I what is the first thing I do? I call my mother. Um Mama D, and- shout out, friend of the show. So I'm sitting there panicking, trying to figure out how to get a half dead, half alive, Jesus ass fucking rat into a Bobby trash rat, bag. If you will. Literally is, there is mold on this thing. I'm not even kidding. It had started molding and was still alive. And for that reason, I'm, I'm out. So sorry if this is your first podcast here. This really should have come with a trigger warning. Holy crap. <laughs> And so I'm like, not even screaming, but like, so pissed off at this thing on the phone with my mom trying to figure this out. Eventually, my neighbor comes outside. And he's like, you know, what's going on? And I'm like, there's a huge rat. And he's like, yeah, I'm out. And I was like, all right, perfect. Yeah, um, <laughs> so once again, back to square one of me dealing with this rat by myself. And uh, so eventually I 
got this rat into the trash bag. I threw my phone like full on Gronk Spike Selly on the phone with my mom. <laughs> and uh, yeah, there's a dead rat in my trash can and has been for like five days. I'm so- nice. But there's also like a literal rat graveyard in my yard because I just kept covering them with flower pots. <laughs> Why is Boston turning into New York City? This is not New York. Wow. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. There's there's just so much to unpack. I can attest that she is not being dramatic at all. I've been to her, Kendra's apartment. Excuse me. Hi, Jameson. This is Jameson in the background, everybody, who's deciding it's now. Gonna itch. She's gonna itch. Oh, okay. But are you done? Great. Um, I, <laughs> I have been to Kendra's apartment several of a time, and I, more often than not, do see dead animals in your backyard. That's the first one Jackson's killed, though, to be fair. Tyler's also been to my apartment. I Um, I haven't seen the backyard. I haven't seen the graveyard. So far, just birds and rats. Uh, Hopefully, Don't you have, like, a broken refrigerator or something back there? I got that. I got that taken away. There was something dead in the bottom of that. Somebody, a couple months ago, dumped a refrigerator in my yard, and there's a dead animal in the bottom of it. You got to get rid of a broken refrigerator. But the thing is, is when they came to take the fridge, they took the dead animal out of it and left the dead animal and nice. took the fridge. So I put bricks on top of the dead animal in my yard oh, nice. Nice. and put it under the staircase. You should put <laughs> bricks at like the site of every uh, dead animal in your yard and just like actually make a graveyard. I was out of bricks after one animal, Tyler. <laughs> oh, great. So, uh, yeah, wow. that's welcome to Saturdays and Seltzers. We'll just start with Lowe's here. Uh, yeah, let's keep it rolling. All right, Tyler Lowe. So, as I'm sure you all have heard by now of a certain submarine situation, um, I think <laughs> you do you want to talk about your submarine thoughts now? Instead yeah, of I, have, of the show? I have two tea party segments because I was thinking this would come up at some point. All right, I'm let's, gonna let's talk I'm, about it. I'm going to say it. Is this tragic? Absolutely. Is it fucking hilarious? Also, yes. (laughs) So, like, if you get offended easily, just click out of this podcast right now. It's not the podcast for you. There's Mm -mm. plenty of them out there. That's all I have to say. The me the the internet will never be as united as it has been over the last week ever again. No, yeah, it's very rare that these instances come up. Um, and it's been great, but if you know me, my low, James Cameron has been a piece of work this whole situation. People his keep interviews. posting about him. It's so bad. I'm so sick of seeing his face. I, I had to go like three months seeing his face when Avatar came out a few months ago. Now he's just back in the news. I'm sick of it. Where is he at on the list him. these days? High. Oh, he's high. He's definitely he's high. top 10, right? Wait, check the list. Where is he at? I don't think uh, he's up there. In in Tyler's head, he's always like top three. What he is on the list varies. Uh, but if he you don't is know. number 10. He's number 10, right mm. behind Matt Ryan. Yeah, That's but see, interesting. you hate James Cameron more than Matt Ryan. Like they're, the, the numbering mm. of the list, I think, can be updated. All right, Probably if you don't should, know about yeah. Tyler's notorious hate list, he literally, you know, we all have some weird notes apps. My weirdest notes app is probably the list of weird band names that I've come up with that I'll never use. Oh, that's um, a good one. Yeah, you want to hear them? Yeah, yeah I would not, love to hear this. This is not a sports show this week, but it is. I promise we'll get there. Uh, all right. You guys are going to love this. I have four of them so far. Weak old ham. Mm, good. Ooh. Shitty old man logic. Love it. It's wet good. jeans. And- oh, wet <laughs> jeans. Good. Wet oh, jeans. wet <laughs> jeans is great. That might, I might most, be all in on wet jeans. The most recent addition as of this week, dead rat in the trash. Dead rat in the trash. Dead rat in the trash. Those are all my band names. Uh, anyways, Tyler has like a hate list. And I do have a it's... hate list. It's not the weirdest notes app I have either. I've got many notes apps. Um, wet jeans one, is so good. There's one that I wanted to name a restaurant. Um, Times New Ramen. Ooh. The ramen restaurant, but it's Times that. New Roman. I like that. Pretty great. I think that's yeah. the only thing in that notes. Um, um, but yeah, I hate James Cameron. I and do I have... want him to stop talking about this submarine. I so do you have... Oh, go ahead, Haley. No, I was just going to say, like, obviously Tyler's distaste, disgust 
um, hatred, however you want to describe it, for James Cameron is very storied and it has a very long history. Very long history, um, yes. I do feel unfortunate for you that you have to watch so much James Cameron content. However, he did not accept interviews prior to the announcement of the implosion because he had assumed he's actually very, if you don't know, he's very into deep submergence. He has mm -hmm. recorded the longest single deep dive ever in human he's history. He's been in the Marianas Trench, dude. Yeah, mm -hmm. for the longest amount of time that any human has ever been. So like he knows what he's talking about. And I kind of respect the move of not speculating on the media or with the media um he's one the of the only people on the planet he knew, that didn't speculate. like him and other people that know deep submergence know the the environment pretty much knew once we heard that they lost contact that the vessel imploded yeah. um me not knowing anything i didn't know that so i, I respect, called it i respect them for not taking the interviews and and speculating when they were pretty certain that they they had died and perished um, well, I also feel like he had to, if you've been paying attention to this, like there's like this new sonar that the U.S. Coast Guard has that they heard the explosion. Like he Navy, probably had word that that was at the Navy. He yeah. probably had word that that happened, dude. Probably. Also, yeah, he's a very well connected man in the Navy. He is. Society. I would just like to say shout out Celine Dion because my heart will go on is back in the top 100 in the U.S. Mm. So go Celine Dion. That was my first thought was to play that song. So Absolute yeah. banger, by the way. You should listen banger. to it today just because. Yeah, Great I tried jam. to get uh, the guitarist at T Thursday to play it last night, but it didn't go very well. Mm. Um, all right, Haley, low. So my low is kind of behind the times. I think this has been like a thing for a while, but I'm just now seeing it on my timeline. Um, and for our... Older viewers that maybe aren't, or listeners that aren't really into TikTok, just stick with me here for a second. But there is this uh, group or uh, community on TikTok, rather, um, mostly people from the South. So maybe you guys have some insight on oh, this. I'm, because... I'm, I've known about Water Talk for six months. I've known about it for a while, Okay, too, because I, but... it's just getting to me, just getting to Hales, which means, you know, I'm a little bit behind. Um, if these people mostly women that will take their Stanley cups or whatever and water and just pour sugar and liquids. And uh, it is crazy. It's like it's like, it's, no, they're crazy. like flavored syrups. Yeah. And like the, and I just don't know. Is this something that has always, have healthy. people it's always like been doing this? Sweetener, like, yeah. I don't know. But the thing that frustrates me, right. And, and I, I read a bunch of articles and deep dives on it today. Like there's a lot of like theories on this. And for me, it just, it always goes back to like toxic diet culture and the fact that they're still saying like, this is just water. It's just water. Like once you pour all that stuff into it, it's not water. It's soda. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I don't know. I was wondering what you guys thought about it. Cause I was just like, this is whack. It's huge on TikTok. People are talking about it everywhere. So as a Southerner, this is like giving me early 2000s Crystal Light vibes. Yes, I was going to say that. Yes. Yeah. We did a thing in like elementary school, I think. We were all obsessed with those little Crystal Light yeah. packets. Or like the Mio days. Uh, I don't just... think I've experienced Mio, but. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, Mio. Yeah, it's this is just Crystal Light 2.0. Uh, it's like, do you remember Sodi Pops, Tyler? I don't think I remember Sodi Pops, no. That was like what a big thing in the South. It was like people were drinking. So Southerners call like soda, like Coke. Pretty much everything is Coke or you like yeah, specify. They do, yeah. South of Virginia, yeah. My cousins yeah. do that and it drives me insane. Yeah, and so everything is just like diet whatever or like Sodi Pop. And it just is giving me diet whatever vibes from like yeah. back in the day. Um, But it's now like an aesthetic thing. So that's why I think that it's having a second glow up. But water talk is crazy. I have seen a lot of people make some crazy concoction. It's it's just literally like you're drinking Hawaiian punch. Sorry. And it cannot be good for your like. That's what no. I mean. That's the thing. That's like, like it might have zero calories, but like your teeth and your gums. No way. Ugh. There's no way it has zero calories. Even if you do a zero calorie sweetener, a lot of those Tarani syrups, like I worked with a lot of those when I was a barista, they have sugar in them and they have calories in them. Like. And if you're pouring as much as some of these people are pouring them. In my opinion, is worse for you than real sugar. See? Little Tylerism for you. I grew up calling that a Spartame. <laughs> like a Greek hero, a Spartame. Great. All right. Awesome. All right. <laughs> We're regrouping here. Um, my high 
is that I have obviously with my new job been in a lot of Slack chats, planning shows. And I just got to say, like, my entire identity is just dropping slay in Slack chats or calling my male coworkers girly pop. <laughs> yep, as you should. I didn't have a whole lot of highs this week, but, you know, anytime I get to call a grown man girly pop feels pretty good. So that's that's what I got going. Haley, what's your thing. high? Um, my high is we are continuing with Golf Girl Summer. Um, I went out to the range for the fourth time yesterday and had my best day so far. Um, need to improve the footwork. And Tyler insists that I get new shoes. So that mm-hmm. is the next development. Um, I'm going to get clubs today. Shout out to my Auntie Donna for providing me with some of her old ones. And we're just going to keep going. I've also realized that some deep Haley DeMello lore, I have really bad asthma and lung issues as I vape on the podcast. Oh, well. Um, But I've never really been able to play sports that require a lot of running or physical exercise. I skied my whole childhood. I coached that for a long time. Obviously, I've been covering sports and I've been watching sports my whole life. But this is the first time in a really long time I've been able to like get into something that I can like actually do and improve upon. So I'm having a lot of fun and I love it. So everyone's been really helpful and really nice and everyone on Twitter encouraging me. I appreciate you. So Haley, you should teach me how to ski because I suck at snowboarding. Oh yeah. I do an SNS ski. ski ski event because I also suck at skiing. I yeah. got a concussion on the kitty slope last year. So nice. snowboarding <laughs> is a lot harder than I think people think it is. It's hard. I've tried yeah. it. It's it's fun though. I like Shocker, it. Shocker based on if you know me at all, I grew up surfing and skating, so I thought it would be way easier than skiing for me. How are you at ice skating? I can do things very fast, but I cannot stop. So mm. ice skaters I have found are the easiest people to teach how to ski. So Let's if go. you can ice skate, you can ski. So uh, you're telling me I would be an expert. Then. I'm telling you there's a chance. Tyler has no high. I like his style. Yep. Um, Very kind of him. Yep. I also threw in my hero was that we had the probably the weirdest night of my life last night. It felt like a fucking fever dream. Me and the girls, Haley, and then two of our other friends went out for drinks and some food last night. And I'm happy I got to see my friends, but it was there was a French guy singing country music with purple loafers Excuse I don't, me? it was wild <laughs> i don't even know i don't know Haley, what's oh. your hero my hero is gonna be a ditto to that absolute fever dream also amex american express uh extended my credit limit this week so they are my hero but also my villain for sending me that email so let me know perfect tyler uh well my hero i'm just going back to last week I want to say how right I was about Ricky Fowler. Okay. Genius move on my part. Um, he's he's been playing well. He's playing well again today. Uh, but I he's not going to win this week. There's that's not in the conversation. But just shout out to me, pat myself on the back that I was correct about Ricky Fowler last week. Also, or- quick quick offset about that Amex. I have officially reordered an Amex card, so that is in the mail. So from- Haley's getting an iPhone from the Bruins incident. This is oh, the, we're still yeah. She's still this is the, God. This is, we have been using uh Google Pay, and now we are getting a new physical card. So, Haley, I don't know how your that game was like last stolen. year. It is literally the off season. That was the first time they played the Kraken of the year, so that had to be, like, fucking December. That was their first loss at home in the regular season. It was before the Jags even played the Chargers, Haley. Correct. So, Holy it's on shit. the way. All right. Well, now we're a sports show uh, until the end of the show. So, obviously, this is a big week for the NBA trades, the draft, all that stuff. We've got some thoughts on the trades first. I'm going to make Haley wait to talk about the Celtics for a second because I was going to talk about the Celtics first and Tyler really said, no, pool party. That's yeah, first. the pool party. Tyler yeah. is Very riding the pool, pool party. party. I know Kim Same. is a pool fan too, so I figured we had to talk about him first. I am a Jordan Pool stan. Fuck Draymond Green. A Jordan He's... Pool apologist, if you will. Uh, 
I am uh, whatever you want to call me as long as it's proactive and positive. I I'm... would argue truther instead of Ooh. a therapist. That does sound better than apologist. You I would argue you are a, you're an OG pool truther too. We're, we're, you know. uh, this is a pool party podcast. Yes. Yes. Splish splash. <laughs> your opinion is trash, bitch. Yep. <laughs> so anyways, I have said before that I think when you either move teams or you get fired or cut or you go somewhere else and you're going to be good or you whatever, it's called winning the breakup in my book. Jordan Poole could be the worst basketball player to ever play after this trade. But you know what? He won the breakup, in my opinion, because he's getting away from that toxic ass relationship with Draymond Green. He already unfollowed him on Instagram. He got a bag. He's going somewhere new, somewhere cool, like fuck all of that shit fuck what you heard fuck what you've been on jordan pool is back it is pool party in dc hour i don't care i also think that this is a good trade outside of that just because i don't know if draymond's gonna be in in i guess they're in san francisco now not oakland so i don't know if he's gonna be there next year he is a free agent i know that he's like testing the waters of whatever but cp3 going to the warriors i think is good because they're also an older team with a lot of experience he's an older guy doesn't have the experience piece of winning a championship or a ring but if he's gonna do it i think that this is his best shot at doing so especially because like anytime you get to play for steve kerr like i feel like you should take that opportunity Absolutely. I think it's so crazy, too, that we are having a conversation that CP3 still doesn't have a ring. Like, that's crazy to me. Like, when I think about that, and I think, honestly, I hate how cheesy and corny it sounds at this rate, but the Warriors might be his best shot at it. And I that, think yeah, it's, it's true fit for him. So I really hope it works out. I mean, I, I, I grew up watching him. Like, I feel like he's just been in the league for so long, but I just want him to do well. I like the move for him, too, because as tough as the West has gotten through some of these trades, like you look at Denver and I mean, obviously, or, I'm sorry, Denver didn't have a trade, but they're going to be the number one seed in the West coming out of here. But mm. when you look at Phoenix with this trade and the three that they now have, at least it's getting a little bit more competitive. Yep. But you have a better shot of making it out of the West with Steph Curry and Steve Kerr than you do coming out of the beast of the East right now with teams like Miami, maybe Philadelphia, depending on what happens there. You look at milwaukee you've got the celtics it's gonna be way easier for a finals path coming out of the west than it is the east that being said there's a lot of talk especially especially with the celtics about you know can they afford to keep these guys who can they afford to sign long term you know they're gonna owe these guys close to 300 million dollars each in a couple of year a year so like i just gotta say the cap is not real. Like, how are the Warriors? I like I say this across the leagues. I don't give a fuck. It's so fake. It's so fucking fake, dude. I will. Yeah. So if you're a new listener, Kendra is very much a cap. A cap is fake fan. Um, truther as well. As a, as is Tyler. I uh, <laughs> naively when I started kind of doing this and covering sports, I was very much like they don't have enough money in the cap. There's no way. There's no way they can do it. The cap doesn't allow for it. And one of our first shows we did, pre like previewing a draft, Kendra's like, the cap is not real. There's no such thing. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's just I think it really also speaks to the fluidity in the NBA right now. If you look at where we were at this point last year, looking at the 22, 23 season, I think the Eastern Conference was just so dynamic and so interesting. And there wasn't that much excitement about the West, whereas now, obviously, like you pointed out in Phoenix, I'm really excited to see how that works out. I really hope they don't be the Phoenix Suns and like blow it, but I remain optimistic for them. And I think that um, honestly, I'm excited to watch the Western Conference, which is something I'm usually not super excited to watch during the NBA season as a Boston Celtics fan. And now as we'll get into a Memphis fan, you know, I can't hate the Suns at all even though a lot of people do and they're going to, I kind of love them for a championship next season. If they get lucky with what happens in the East, obviously whoever comes out of the East, I don't care who gets treated where, how these rookies develop, whoever comes out of the East is, I don't care who it is. They're, they're my favorite, you know, but a lot of people hate on Kevin Durant. I kind of fucking love Kevin Durant just because he is, like, he's not, like, I don't want to call him a piece of shit, but, like, just the Twitter burners and the drama and him refusing to be called Durantula because he wants to be easy money sniper. I hate all of that so much that I'm kind of like, yeah, fuck it. Yeah, I mean, listen, 
I think Draymond Green has made me appreciate Kevin Durant more because I hate, Draymond so I, much. I hate him so much. I'm a big Draymond that, guy. Of course you uh, are. Uh, of course you are. You Draymond just hate guy. happiness and, and mm-hmm. the good things in the world. And so the game of sense. basketball and being respectful. And I like a character. I like a villain. I love well, a villain. No, in no, you shut up. You know why you like Draymond Green? Because. Can't say Michigan because he went to Michigan State. No, no, because he, I'm Tyler. <laughs> Because he went back to Michigan State and punched one of their his own football players in the face at a club. He might have deserved it. Okay, we there it is. Know. There it is. He might have had it, it coming. Do we know? That's it. Well, the court papers also say that his friends may have put their hands on the guy's girlfriend as well. So, Tyler. I like a villain. I like a heel. <laughs> uh, I, like a, I like a good WWE heel. Welcome back, dude. Jameson. J-Mo. I am not a Draymond truther at all. He's the only reason that when I was covering the Warriors that I could not be a Warriors fan. Yeah, I have absolutely detested him in the last couple of seasons. And what I was saying before I had to if you're watching on YouTube, you're getting a great show today. Just watching Jameson come in and out. But I think that I don't mind Kevin Durant as much as I used to. And I'm kind of hoping for his success, which is something that I've never really I thought. I hate, love him. I hate, love him. I hate, love him too. And I'm sorry, Durantula is a far superior nickname. I don't even understand how this is still a conversation. Like, come on. He originally wanted his nickname to be The Servant. Wasn't he? um... He's a beta. I like him even more now. Tyler Stokes. What was he before the uh, Durantula? Uh, it was it, something about him being skinny. Slim yeah, Reaper. Slim, Slim Reaper. Reaper. I was going to say it was, the, it was the scream guy. Like, that's Slim, Reaper. Slim Reaper. Slim Reaper. So Which sick. is so much better than the last one, than the Easy Money Sniper. Like, both of those nicknames Easy are Easy Money great. Sniper is just too much of a mouthful. I just, it sounds like someone's Xbox gamer tag. It does. Yeah. It sounds like a, like, auto-generated gamer tag at that this was not in our notes at all uh <laughs> no yeah quick kevin durant oh, rant sorry yeah, guys sorry we're katie apologists now uh even though i kind of hate him still don't don't, don't tweet me that because no. i will i will not take that title at all <laughs> uh the big news of the week if you listen to our show is probably the celtics in a three-way trade they received Kristaps, porzingis and picks and traded marcus smart to the memphis grizzlies Haley, i have a ton of notes about this whole thing and a lot of thoughts i need to know first and foremost as a player nothing else because we'll get into it how do you mm. feel about Kristaps porzingis okay thank you so much for clarifying as a player because that is very important to keep in mind here especially as what we're going to talk about later um listen if he can stay not injured i'm intrigued i'll say it i'm a little intrigued i i don't know i think if he can if he can stay healthy i'm interested to see what he will bring in terms of a veteran personality not having as you know much of a younger squad maybe having some more of that outside perspective hopefully to lead not necessarily lead jason tatum but help steer him to leading this team in the right direction if he is christoph porzingis and is injured a lot i think this is really stupid and i don't know that we have necessarily seen something that has given them that excitement but obviously they're going to do what they're going to do brad stevens is going to brad stevens um i just at this point i'm buckled in and just whatever the celtics do i just have to kind of like look out the window and be like okay because i feel very much like i usually feel with new england patriots which is that they're just gonna say fuck so it and go for it what do you think he brings to the team that you didn't have and does he make this a championship team now because i don't think so i think that they stayed the exact same team that they were they just knew they needed to dump the marcus smart contract in hopes that jason tatum could become this you know leader on this team but i gotta say unless they trade grant williams he's the only set of balls that's on your team and he's not even in your starting five and that's fucking concerning as fuck to me yeah i'm not even gonna i'm not even gonna cap i think he is uh gone grant williams is out of here 
that's the that's the word that I'm hearing. Listen, I mean, I, I don't think that Christoph Porzingis really brings anything super special to the team. Obviously, like I just pointed out with his injuries, and if you look at his like stats from last year, there's a lot of zips that you're seeing across the board. So, you know, we have seen that you can be a great basketball player in 2015 when he went in the first round. Now we're in 2023, eight years later, you know, the hype around the people should not be the same. Like I think Porzingis, I still think back to that draft and I still think back to all the hype around him then. And then you have to remember that he's not necessarily the same player he was then. We've seen a lot of injuries happen over the course of his tenure. Um, I, I don't know. I don't see anything other than height and just having a name from another, another um, organization. So they're not a championship team. No, I didn't say that. I that, said well, I, I asked that. I also we are having a truce right here. Haley and I know that no matter how contentious this gets, we love each other. Oh yeah, no, a hundred percent. Listen, I'm honestly like, I've, like as a Celtics fan and as a Celtics apologist, a hundred percent through and through. I wasn't really super psyched about this. I love Marcus Smart. Um, I love what he brought to the team just as a personality, and obviously his his playing ability can be discussed but I think he was a really strong player and a really fundamental aspect to what they have created there going forward um under Joe Missoula I'm not necessarily sure how everything is going to come into fruition but I still remain really confident in Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown and their leadership abilities and I think that they have the capability to become a really strong team obviously a strong contender in the Eastern conference. Um, I think I'm still too raw coming off the playoffs. If I'm being a hundred percent honest, like I can't even think about them making a playoff run right now because I just, I, I just can't think about that pain again. (laughs) I know that sounds so bad, but like, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Okay. So obviously you just said it and it's not a secret that you are a Celtics apologist 100% during this whole conversation of the trade with other teams Malcolm Brogdon was originally the guy allegedly on the trade block and at the last minute the Clippers decided that he wasn't healthy enough to go after and trade for so they had to find somebody else in Memphis to kind of make that trade happen minutes before Kristaps Porzingis contract had some complications with it at midnight. And so if the Celtics knew that Malcolm Brogdon's injury was this bad, is that kind of shady on the Celtics part to still kind of try and deal him somewhere yep. else knowing? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So how do you yep. feel about that? Cause I think that that's really fucking shady. I think it's shady. Listen, I thought it was shady when he was in the conversation to begin with, because we saw him, obviously you have it in here. I first thing I thought of six, we always make a joke at the bar when we go to the Celtics games, sixth best man instead of best sixth man. Cause we always just mess up the word. So I always say that if I say that, I don't mean it, but best sixth man in the NBA. Listen, I think that's a huge accolade. And I said that when he received that, I think that's a really big deal just because it shows his ability to not only come off the bench and play well, but in a team of such dynamic, and I, again, I feel so weird saying this because they played so shitty in the last um, series they played in, but for the most part, a group of really dynamic scorers, I thought he, he added something really different um, and brought something it really kind of kicked them in the ass a little bit when they needed to. So I was surprised that they were shopping him around a little bit. And then I saw the report that the Clippers were like, uh, that injury though. And then it made a lot more sense to me. So I think that you're right. It's definitely a little bit shady. Obviously now the word is that Brogdon is going to stay with Boston, which I'm excited about just because I like him as a person. I like him as a player, but yeah, definitely some shady stuff going on, but not to say that that doesn't happen everywhere. Like, I don't even mean just shady in, like, the injury report fact. I also mean shady towards, like, him. You know what I mean? It's Mm -hmm. like, you have been with us for one year. Exactly. You have a season where you don't win, like, a not. it's not a not-for-nothing accolade. And now we very much reportedly put you on the trade block as an injured person and tried to get away with it. And now we're, like, tucking our tail between our legs because we're probably not going to be able to deal you now that you're this injured and we didn't let out that you were this injured. So now you're going to be on this team next year, which is good because the talent's great. 
But at the same time, how do you expect someone just to be like, oh yeah, no big deal, guys. Let's go chase a ring. Yeah. I don't know. I think so much of it too is going to come from the coaching with the new, the new coaching team that they're putting together. I'm really interested to see how that's going to work out and what they're really going to try and improve upon and just see it's, it's almost like an experiment, right? Like I'm kind of just interested to see how that's all going to work out. We'll see. It's going to be a lot of pieces moving together this yeah. coming season to make the Celtics work. I don't think they're done making moves. I don't think they can be done. making. I moves certainly just, hope not. Please God. <laughs> because their bench depth is minuscule at the moment. Yeah. That being said, who do you think is more likely to go Grant Williams or Peyton Pritchard? That's my last question about the Celtics before we talk about the Grizzlies in this trade. Well, that's a great question. I'm glad you asked you, and I'm going to answer this partially because I want to hear your answer as well. Um, I'm going to go Grant Williams. You have had a lot of thoughts on Grant Williams over this past season and just in general, um, his presence on the Celtics or lack thereof on the court, rather. Um, The rumors I've been hearing is a sign and trade agreement for Williams to leave with Porzingis coming in. I think he's going to want a team that's going to give him more minutes as we saw this season, that was kind of lacking. And I think it will continue to lack, especially with Porzingis, if he stays healthy coming onto the team. Don't know where he's going to go. I know that we've talked about previously, and I can't remember, you texted me something along the lines during playoffs of like, wasn't this supposed to be Grant Williams' team? Question mark. And it's just like, so I don't know. I don't think it's... It was getting to a point where we would see our W3 out there a lot more than we would saw Grant Williams. That was the Williams you would see. Or you said uh, it's the wrong – you said made a comment about the wrong Williams or something. So you have had Grant Williams up here for a no, while. No, I know what it was. It was that Robert Williams was supposed to start or something like that. And I don't know. I it, Yeah, it was, a, it was a joke about the Williams, but it's not Grant Williams' team. Never has been, never will be. Yeah, and so it's just kind of like – I don't feel, and and not to not give him credit, I don't personally as a fan feel as tied to him as I do Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, et cetera. You shouldn't. And I think that if he wants more minutes, he's not going to find him here. So they should never, they should never cater to him ever. I think that Peyton Pritchard's more likely to be gone just because with this vanilla ass big three in quotes where's your attitude coming from I'm sorry it, where is it coming from where's your bully ball coming from where is your hustle coming from and I don't think that Grant Williams is a starter maybe somewhere else not here right. just because I agree somebody, but somebody else might need him he's not a starter in Boston and he's not gonna be but the reason that I think he is is because he's got the not that he's a starter but the only reason that I think that he is capable of being traded is that he's got that energy and hustle but the Celtics need that right now, especially mm. off the bench. Like mm-hmm. the Celtics need that like bench work right now. hundred percent. And so I think Peyton Pritchard's more likely to go just because he's fine. He's easily tradable. He's a likable guy. He can fit in somewhere else, probably get some more minutes and make a difference somewhere. I just yeah. really creative with his ball play. Like he's, he's a really interesting young player. So I think I you could like- get more for Grant, but they just, can't sacrifice what he brings off the bench I don't think unless they make some major crazy moves somewhere that I don't see happening I don't know I can't decide if I a lot of people are behind Brad Stevens live and die Brad Stevens I kind of think that he's your biggest problem yeah listen I (laughs) here's where I stand on Brad Stevens um I am suspicious I'm very (laughs) suspicious. I'm going in optimistically, but every time I see a picture of him up in the boxes at TD, like, I feel like he's doing like this kind of like, he's just like, he's got this, this villain energy about him. And I really hope that what his master plan is, whatever it is, works out, but I remain very suspicious. And that's all I'll say. That's, suspicious i think that brad, brad stevens is- fans are coming for me brad, brad stevens ghost is in your room right now oh my god he said um, that was not bussin that was not a bussin opinion well too bad brad all right so obviously marcus smart gets dealt to the grizzlies here i know that that's uh, you know what as much as like marcus smart is dramatic and whatever he did bring the energy that i think is now kind of grant williams job until he or if he gets traded 
I liked that about him. I think that they did need to get him off of the team just in the hopes that Jason Tatum will somehow blossom into this leader that he hasn't been. Um, But I, the word around town is that the Grizzlies wanted to do this so that John Morant, and this is not my wording, this is actual legitimately, I think Woj said this, but they wanted an adult in the room. An adult in the room for John Morant. And I honestly, I linked the Grizzlies potential roster for this upcoming season. I don't hate this move for them at all. I actually really like it. I think it improves their roster a lot. But here's the thing. It's going to go one of two ways. Either Ja and Marcus are going to be the best of friends, have the best chemistry, have this attitude about them when they play, and it's going to be beautiful. Or it is going to be like this fucking submarine and implode immediately immediately yeah i mean listen i have said this previously on the podcast and i agree and i not i agree but i still feel this way i am continuously intrigued by this grizzlies franchise i think that they have a potential to become one of our biggest competitors in the east and i think that they are really dynamic really fun to watch Looking at this roster, there's a lot of personality on this roster. I love it. There's a lot of personality. So I love it. I mean, beyond that, great basketball, too. So it's just like, this is, I have no idea how this is going to go. I mean, Steven Adams, Dylan Brooks, Marcus Smart, John Morant. John Morant, if he can stay out of trouble, this team is a weapon and a young one give him if John Moran can get his shit together in two years this is a conference finals team but here's what I'll say it's a conference finals team if they don't let that personality seep into the team and let it become an issue I feel like a lot of these guys have the ability or the tendency to do that and I really hope they can keep it out of the locker room make it all you know a cohesive group like I it's going to be awesome happening. or it's going to be awful. Exactly. And I would just love to be a fly on the wall. Like that would be just in the Memphis Grizzlies building right now. It's just got to be. I'm dude. sure there's a lot of excitement, but dude, when these guys all get into, that's a lot of testosterone. If it works out, though, that's going to be sick. But if they make it work, it's going to be sick. And I'm it's excited gonna to be watch it either awesome. way. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be awesome. I think that that is like my... You know how they do hard knocks in the NFL? I need whatever oh. the NBA version would be for the Memphis Grizzlies. I would die. Please, God, Netflix, anybody, if you're listening for some reason, please make a Memphis Grizzlies documentary in the offseason, preseason of this. I know that you can't this die. season for obvious reasons, but next year, load it up. Load yep. it up. I'm start ready. When, start when Jaw comes back. I will eat up all that content. All of it. Um... Last kind of big trade thing that I want to mention. I don't have a ton to say about it just because we've talked about Bradley Beal already. I thought that he was going to the Celtics for a hot second, but the Wizards. Can you imagine? Traded him to the Suns. We should have talked about this earlier, but I we already said they're kind of a new super team. Should have thrown in the Bradley Beal news there, but it was later in our notes. I go Katie. Go Slim Reaper. Yo, <laughs> go um, yeah, uh, Tyler, as our, our resident, well, technically you're a Pistons fan because you, you ride the Pistons for some reason in the NBA, but. Um, because of Detroit, Detroit baby. the Pistons Dude, are sick. The Pistons are sick. We're a big culture. Team. And exactly. RIP the Wizards. Yeah. I just yeah. this this has been a tough look for the Wizards. I just I, I don't know what they're gonna do. Uh, <laughs> like cringe, cringe fest at that whole situation. But I agree. The rebuilding for sure. Yeah, rebuilding. Uh, hopefully they can do it in an effective manner. Um, and, that and they're does. having a pool party, baby. Yeah, they it are is. having a pool party, and yeah. you know what? Who cares when you're having a pool party? They're yeah, they're like, you know what? Like my pistons, they're a lot like my pistons. They're just vibes. I take it just back vibes. because I was thinking from the perspective I of who they it. were losing, but you're right. The pool it's party just vibes. I'm vibes in. are at an all time high. I'm all well, in. Yeah, really. I'm not all really. in on the pool I'm party. I'm saying they're at an all time high. Fans I've talked to are very unhappy. Uh, yeah, you are such I, a shit my, show today. My yeah. feelings are with Wizards fans for sure. I know but the pool party. Me. Hear me out. As a Jacksonville Jaguars fan, believe me, I get it. That being said, I look back at those years now and I'm kind of like, that rocked because now we're really good and that rocks. 
You can't experience high highs without some low lows, people. And you got Jordan Poole. That part. And that is one of the highest highs you can ever have. It's Jordan Poole. It's Jordan Poole. <laughs> All right. See, I'd love to make another Almost Saturday of Jordan Poole, but the people would be like, "All right, we get it." <laughs> no, I don't even care. I don't even care. We have to find one of him in a, a wizard uniform. I There's have one be a already. Mock-up somewhere. I already, yeah. I already have it. Yeah. Great. All awesome. right. Fuck it. NBA draft notes. I don't have. This was the shit. The draft, draft happened. It was it awful. The draft happened. <laughs> I hated it. I. You hated it except for one thing, which n- was. Nobody get mad at me for this because it's not going to sound how I want it to sound. I sped home, not really, like going 75 on the way home from happy hour last night. I didn't have any beverages because your girl's on antibiotics. Just throwing that out there. I had one sip of a coconut drink to try it, and it was terrible. That being said, I sped home from happy hour last night. For what? Um, I'll tell you for what. Uh, a single jacket. I'd that, like to say that you did like <laughs> that. I, I loved the fashion. The fashion was the great. fashion. The fashion was great. That being said. Yeah, all right, on the burner, NCAA basketball. A lot of these draft picks and a lot of the top draft picks were not NCAA college basketball players. Thank you. Thank you. Is is college basketball dying? Here's the thing. I Different think, sport, in my opinion. I think college basketball is entering its ice hockey era, and here's what I mean by that. We have both worked in, well, actually all three of us have experience in hockey. I went to a huge hockey high school. A lot of the people I knew growing up didn't go to college, played juniors, then got a then got a deal at college, then played. What I'm feeling with the NBA that we're seeing is those players that aren't ready for the NBA are going to the G League. I'm stirring my tea. They're going Coffee. to Europe to play. And therefore, in these drafts, that's where teams are drafting them from because they're ready to go. I feel like the NCAA is not necessarily preparing these players unless they're some Zion Williamson level, you know, incredible. Duke, whatever. Yeah. Duke, sorry. You know, I had to, you know, yeah. I had to do it on them. Yeah. <laughs> Well, so I have that in my notes about Wemby. I'm like, people are so polarized by him because they're like, I don't know if he's going to be good. He's going to be a bust. I have no faith in him. He can't put on any weight, blah, blah, blah. I don't know why people feel this way because he's been playing overseas against literally 30 year old yep. fucking men. Former as a, NBA players. As a child. Like, I, I know don't why. Understand. It's because they haven't seen him. They're, that, those games aren't televised like NCAA. I know. I know. That's, and a, and that's the only reason why. If they that's watched him play, they'll say, oh, this kid's incredible. Yeah, they don't but know Nobody's ball. seen him actually play. They don't know ball like us. But that's the thing is that people are just like, I have no faith in him. People are saying he's going to be better than Kevin Durant, blah, blah, blah. Shut up. Shut up. Like these kids, like all of them, all of these kids that did not come from an NCAA school have been playing basketball as 17, 18, 19 year old kids against grown ass fucking men grown-ass men yeah i think we're we're past the point where you can you can start like you can stop harping on on european basketball i think we're at a point where european basketball i would equate to like juniors in hockey it, it, bigger than like they are really good and it's really competitive well, even in like the olympics and stuff like they mm-hmm. compete like they beat yep. ass well look at Jokic too like just be like basketball is not necessarily an american sport it may have been no. founded here but it's not Amer- like you know mm-hmm. it's not we're seeing a lot of people come from all over the world. That Look at that Mavericks kid basketball. too. What's his name? Luca. Doncic. Yeah, Luca yeah. Doncic. Yeah, He's like it's just it's something boat. that I think that we can't necessarily knock on, and I think that that's a great point. To your point, Kendra, is obviously those players that are playing in the G League and the European leagues are better prepared for the NBA than these NCAA players, and that's why most of these NCAA players aren't going right to the league. So there's Which- something to say about that. I have later in our notes, but I'll bring it up now. I can ask Haley her thoughts. That's the only reason with the Bucks pick later in this draft, their first pick, they took a kid from UConn that I like wasn't, I I thought that it was a decent take just because I, 
I like Andre Jackson because he came from UConn. They just won some hardware. Like I'm okay with like taking kids that are kind of either one found success or two have played for a big basketball school. I'm okay with that. Like that's fine for me. I I give that a good grade because I you've won some hardware. You've been through. You have some experience doing something like that. But I I agree with you that college basketball, like you got to pick it up. I don't know what's going on here. I don't know if it's just because European basketball is kind of kicking ass. I don't know what it is. I think it's is. closer to the style of the NBA than college. Yeah. College basketball still uses like big men. They're, that's still a huge part of their game. And it's just not the way the NBA is going. You so, guys hear me? I dropped out a little bit there. Yeah, I got I mean, you. Okay, cool. Um, yeah. So I think Wemby's great. I think I I love him as a person. I wish nothing but the best for him. I do think it sucks to like get drafted and go somewhere like San Antonio because San Antonio is probably the worst city I have ever been to in my entire life. Really? And I've been to almost all 50 states um and almost every major city. San Antonio is the worst. Come my boyfriend is Antonio. from San Antonio. Um it's Somehow. unsafe. It's mm. small. It's not it's a, and like it's not young it's not hip it's not like bleh, bleh. it's not mm. safe at all like scary and i'm from jacksonville <laughs> um yeah. at to the hornets took brandon miller all i have is fuck brandon miller i don't even want to talk about it i'm sorry i'm so sorry hornets fans like i have a couple friends who are hornets fans just because i am like from the south and like a bunch of my friends went to college in the carolinas I that sucks. Yeah, um, I, I very much real quick. All I'm going to say on this um, again, apologies to the men in the chat that don't understand what I'm about to reference. We were rooting for you. We were mm-hmm. all rooting for you. That's exactly the vibe I got from this. Shout out Tyra Banks and America's Next Top Model. If you haven't seen that video, go watch it. It's really funny. Um, but I feel the same way. I love the Carolinas. I have a lot of friends that live down there um, living in Massachusetts. A lot of people go to school down there from here. Yeah, I know. Um, it's weird, so I know so. a lot of people that are like living down there now. And listen, I want to root for the Hornets. I want them to do well. I want them just like Memphis. I'm riding with these like middle of the South teams right now. Um, no longer. I'm very disappointed in this pick, especially considering the workout that the reports were that scoot had down there which were that it was a significantly better workout than brandon miller so i'm honestly disappointed yeah. that he didn't go second um Me too. brandon miller and hornets are canceled sorry apparently i was listening to uh tennessee sports radio on my way home last night because my phone died um apparently he said paul george is his goat yeah he did this is just wild hmm. it he is that's an interesting pick. it's an interesting take yeah okay um that's uh, yeah uh so i did want to shout out that asar and amen thompson going back to back was super cool because brothers going consecutively in a draft hasn't happened since the 1999 nhl draft when two brothers went three and four at the sedines i don't remember who it was i heard it on the broadcast and i looked it up and i should have put their names in here and i I can't imagine it's not the sedines but maybe it's not i don't know but They're the I only other the, twins I know. In yep, the show. Sedine twins, Daniel and Henrik. Mm-hmm. Imagine being their mom, though. Like, that's so cool. Yeah. Like, I personally, so we got a SAR in Piston Land. I kind of wanted Amin more. Damn, I liked his, I liked wrong, his, I liked his wife's brother. Suit more. The I wrong like brother, more. which was your fear from the get go. Correct me if I'm wrong, but when we what discussed if, the it, was, draft, yeah. I knew I was afraid. getting one of the twins. I knew yes. I was going to get one of the twins. What if they just did like a classic twin swap? They do a twin swap? What yeah. is that movie? Um, Freaky Friday. No, trap? Uh, Parent Trap. Parent Trap. Parent trap. Yeah. Do a parent the, trap. The NBA That'd trap. Be fun. That'd the be Pistons fun. trap. They do look identical. I can't tell them apart. You could get the old switcheroo. What if like, what if he just wants to live in Detroit? What if they want to switch cities? That's a good point. Where's the other one? Um, Houston? I I yeah. Think it's Houston. Uh, Dallas, Maybe? Houston, something like that. Texas, I, I, somewhere. Definitely not Dallas. Um, I think it's Houston, though. Um, I, I got to say 10 out of 10 for the Anthony Black memes. I... Oh my god, they're so good. I'm all in on this kid. I love they're this so kid. Good. I'm all in on the Orlando Magic. I didn't know he existed until I'm night, so in on but... the Orlando Magic right now. <laughs> the Orlando Magic haven't been this cool since before Dwight Howard left and bought a Literally, bunch of seats. 
literally <laughs> like i don't before know before dwight howard was an outed snake guy <laughs> i don't know if you all feel this way i look at him and he looks like an, or- an orlando magic i love it i absolutely love it i love it for the franchise i love it for uh, i love it for him i just they I have had so many picks in general but so many early picks the last couple of years that if their development is worth half a fuck like they might actually be good in a couple years which is kind of sick i don't know i i all i could think of was the guy from lmfao the party rock guy party rock i was thinking of corbin Blue. that's exactly who i was thinking about i was also thinking <laughs> about um my boy corbin um, Blue. i was thinking about corbin blue yeah it was giving very corbin blue energy and the mm. disney logo on his magic jersey too it's just very corbin oh, blue. i love it <laughs> i can we please go to an orlando orlando magic game I just for the yeah movie? yeah okay. it's super Why close to my mom. disney world too it's like two hours from my mom um so we should just take a week when we go to jack's florida okay. trip with the pod florida core <laughs> uh Obviously, we have to talk about Grady Dick because his suit was the best thing of all time. And the fact that it was a play on Dorothy because he's from Kansas is fire. Is that why he did so it? Okay. Awesome. If that's why he did it, I'll, uh, I'll Yeah, because he's it. from Kansas. I didn't that realize is? that. I didn't realize that was the joke. But oh, And he got his yeah. red bottoms. It looks bottoms. so uncomfortable. I would wear that. I need that it in looks my size. Like it, he looked like he was stuck in like this position. Here's the, the thing. and I, I mean this in the most endearing way. I think that Grady Dick is not necessarily the most conventionally attractive person, which is why his personality makes him attractive. His personality makes him attractive. It's just like the vibe that he gives off, not necessarily his, he doesn't rely on his look. So for him to roll up, for him to roll up in that outfit with just all the confidence in the world, I was like, bitch, you better work. Like, you better work. (laughs) Um, I love him. I'm also going to give him a shout out because the thing he was, I don't know if you guys saw this, that he was most excited about meeting Drake. Yeah. That would be me going to Toronto, honestly. Yeah. Like, no, fair. the best thing about That's so this fair. was that bars in Toronto were rumored to be screaming, we want dick. No way. Chanting, we want dick. That's, you know, listen, I'm a Toronto hockey hater, Toronto Raptor apologist. Same. Sorry. Same. Same. <laughs> I almost was like, <laughs> Toronto, we're not in Kansas anymore. It's true. But I didn't think people would get it. <laughs> I guarantee um, they make some sort of jo- like their social media team has to do. I that. want my royalties. What's today's date? It is Friday, 23rd. 23rd, 2023. If you guys do this, you copied me and I want my royalties now. Um so hopefully he doesn't get Drake cursed. Kind of bringing it back to the Celtics really quick, just before we move on. Tyler, do you have any notes that I missed? I don't think so. No, I kind of covered everything. all mine. So yeah, we covered I all give my bases. The Bucks a B plus because they traded with Orlando to chase. I talked about Andre Jackson from UConn, and anytime you can add a champ, W in my book. And then I didn't love the later pick, the Chris Livingston kid from Kentucky, just because he's super young, and I think he could have used maybe one more year in college to develop a little bit. If he can, like, succeed in the G League a little bit, I'll feel less worried. I just think that he's a little bit more of a project that they need, considering Chris Middleton is in flux. I don't know. We have Bobby Portis for a couple more years. I don't know about Drew Holiday's contract off the top of my head. I don't know. I don't know. It's whatever. It's fine. I don't I don't feel good or bad about it. I just think he's too young. And then I gave the Celtics a C plus because they were giving big Bill Belichick trading back for Christian Gonzalez vibes with all the trades. And I get that they need to win right now because their championship window is closing and maybe Brad Stevens is just collecting Pokemon cards to throw at somebody for something. But I don't know. You're really putting all your eggs in one basket here, Brad. Yeah, I don't know. Listen, I'm going to first I'm going to jump off the Livingston thing because I also was very confused by that. The kid was born in 2003. Well, like, okay, just as a reminder, um, that is crazy to me. But I think it also speaks back to our earlier conversation. I feel like a lot of these kids that are entering the NBA draft right out of NCAA are not ready. I think they either need that G League time or they need to have like an Andre Jackson situation where they had time to have a good couple years, a championship run, a good tournament performance. 
then they might be more prepared than say someone like Chris Livingston. I don't know, man. I, I get why you were hesitant with that pick. It was a little confusing to me as well. What do you grade the Celtics? Also, if you didn't know that I'm a Bucks fan and you're new here, come welcome. Hi, welcome. Hi, how are you? Um, I'm a Celtics fan and I give them a B minus because I can't give them a C plus because that seems really harsh because I'm a uh, Stan. Um, but Can I think I a C plus is a very question? C plus is fair. And As the a- championship window is closing. I think we need to talk about that more, 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 more. The championship window is closing. So they got to kick their ass into gear here. I'm getting kind of tired of it. Can I ask you a question? And this is like, just a Boston sports fan question. Why is it that whenever the Celtics do something, everyone's like, yeah, love it. Gotta have it. Right thing to do. Woo woo. Yeah, let's fucking go. But whenever the Bruins even breathe, people are like, fuck the Bruins. Like they suck. What are they doing? Why? Why is that? I think it comes down to ownership. I think the way that the teams are, the the way that the teams make those decisions differs in the sense that they take, uh, fan consideration in listen i think that any sports organization is going to do whatever they can to make themselves money that's just what they're going to do or to win a championship or both so um i think that the bruins and the celtics are comparable and contrastable and like if you look at the bruce cassidy situation versus the joe missoula situation i think they're very different in the sense that the Bruins fans really ride for the players and the team. And I think that the issue with that was they wanted to, I don't know. I I don't know what I'm trying to say here. I guess what I'm trying to say is that, you know, like when Bruce Cassidy left, for example, Bruins fans were upset because they saw what he brought to the city as a coach. And obviously it was a player issue that, that was part of that decision but I think still fans were grateful to him with the Celtics. I think that every time someone makes a decision and in the NBA in general, I think that moves are just made more frequently and, you know, just kind of less organized than say other sports. Um, I think that the city has more faith in the Boston ownership than they do in the Bruins ownership personally. Okay. Um, All right. Any other NBA notes? Nope. nope. All right. Breaking up the show here with shit that you may or may not care about. This we are a PLL podcast. Kendra's PLL corner. This is my lightning PLL thoughts because nobody listens to PLL stuff unless you are actually here for PLL stuff. And there's no PLL this week because there is a world championship. Go USA. Ooh. My homies love USA. Go USA. Uh, last week, the PLL was in Columbus. I went three for four with my picks. The Water Dogs versus Atlas was a crazy game if anybody watched it. I said last week that the Atlas have a championship roster and just aren't kind of getting the productivity out of it that I think that they should. Losing on a last-minute goal to the champs, I don't think it's anything to hang your head over, but it is a short season in the PLL, and I think that they need like a serious come-up if they're going to kind of fall into this groove at an early enough stage. And it's like we've seen teams like the Chaos – in prior years kind of have a really shitty start especially with some of their guys you know playing in nll championships and stuff and be able to get it together but you just have such a good roster that i think that you your championship window like the celtics is closing so get it together even though the water dogs are the champs i think that they i think they are they should be you know losing by one goal is competing and it's like pretty much the same caliber but i don't know you needed a statement win i also said for a quick session or quick second I loved this game for the PLL because I saw this everywhere. It seemed like a lot of people were able to like, it was a very good intro game for people that haven't really watched a lot of professional lacrosse, obviously with the league still developing and the team still, you know, still have a place to be assigned. I thought it was great for just lacrosse in general. I saw a lot of eyes on it and huge win for the water dogs. I thought it was great. Yeah. I also said last week that it was a must win game for the Chrome against who I think is the worst team in the league. And a lot of people, I think the worst team in the league is the cannons, especially because Lyle Thompson is not playing this season and he's the best player in the world and you're without him. Um, They went down huge early and wound up losing by one. I know it's only week three, but this roster is way better than this. They're built to win. They're a lot of people's favorite for a championship and they have not played like it so far this season. And they didn't have 
a ton of guys playing NLL ball to come back and help their team. Like their team is what it is and it is from the start. And they're, they had a good week one and the last two weeks have been really disappointed in them. And like I said, it's a pretty short season. You got to play good lacrosse, you know, coming up here in a couple weeks to really put yourself in a place to contend for a championship. I know that obviously lacrosse is a little bit different in the fact that only one team doesn't make the postseason, but don't be that one team. Your roster is too good for this. Mm-hmm. Archers versus chaos. Uh, I've said over and over and over again that I think the archers are the most overrated team in the league. And I still believe it. The chaos are playing lights out. They have good coaching. They added Nick Rowland on the face off, which has been way bigger than I think anybody has expected it to be for them. They're moving, shaking and producing. I love this chaos team. I know that they've been really successful over the last couple of years. They have a fucking lights out defense. I don't think it's their year to win a championship, but they're such a physical and motivated team that I am never shocked by any win that they're able to produce. So if they even won a championship, I wouldn't be shocked. I just don't think it's their year. Um, and then last but not least, the Woods versus Whips game. I said the Whips were due for a win. They hadn't had a win all season, and they're a way better roster than a one and two roster at this point. Um, they murdered the Woods, and the Woods are a really good team. They just couldn't seem to get it going offensively outside of Ryder Garnsey, which now le- he leads the PLL in points. Um, he's had 14 goals, I think, one two-pointer. He's had two sock tricks, and if you don't know what a sock trick is, there's three weeks in the season, and he has scored more than six goals or six goals in two of the three games. That's fucking incredible he finds different ways to score every week and every single time I'm like there's no way he could get more creative than the last goal he somehow finds a way to do so he's all over ESPN he's everywhere he's the man the myth the legend roll woods they're on a comeback I'll go team USA those are my tons of woods woods fans out in Columbus too this weekend um a lot of woods fans showing by them the kids are rolling with the woods because I think they I we talked about it during the jersey preview I love their look, their vibe. Um, again, let's just like not oversee that, like over jump this for a second. That was six goals each time. Yeah. Was that that's insane? Sock trick. That's two, two of them. Both of them. <laughs> Both of them. Both of them. Uh so yeah, I I Ryder Garnsey is like, he's that dude. He's having a season. Plus, all right. He's got that bear in him. If you've listened. <laughs> this show you know that we're a pretty progressive podcast i don't think anybody's listening to this show that isn't a semi-progressive person and i just have to say i love the woods for all the progressive personalities on that team good dudes good dudes um so yeah we have actually you know what speaking of progressive our on that note nhl thought of the week i know a lot of people listen to this podcast to talk about hockey Other than the preseason schedules being released this week, which isn't a huge deal, there's not a whole lot going on. But what did happen was that the NHL announced that there will be no specialty jerseys and warmups this season, which means no pride, no autism awareness, no military appreciation, no hockey fights, cancer, etc. This was a fucking bomb and a half by the NHL. Yeah, I was super bummed by this. I, I and especially when you come into it from the sponsorship perspective, I think I'm a little bit biased because there are so much that you can do around these theme nights, these celebration nights, but there's also so many people that get to benefit and experience really great NHL hockey moments from this. Um, One person I can think of right off the bat is a young woman who I know that dropped the puck at the hockey cancer event in in the Bruins. And she has a really awesome. Ben, the little Oilers kid. Yep. Like, so it breaks my heart for things like that. I would hope that they still continue to, you know, incorporate those, those aspects um into the games in some way listen i'm not going to call i'm going to call it how i see it i think it's a shame that they did this during pride month i can't help but think that it had any nothing to do with that whole situation and honestly i'm kind of upset about this i was i was pretty bummed and it's not a good look for the nhl at all um it's all over twitter it just does not scream inclusivity in a time of inclusivity and it's just kind of a yeah they dropped the ball on this for sure or the puck i guess you wow. could say. there you go my my thing is is that it doesn't really matter what side politically you're on for this and i see a lot of people being like oh religion this oh religion that yeah. whatever you 
are now pro-cancer and anti-military. And yeah, I'm- that's what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's not just the gays, bitch. It is it is literally, like, you are now pro-cancer and anti-military and whatever the fuck else. Like, this, I feel like hockey has pissed off a lot of people on both sides with this. Because even if you're anti-pride, whatever, at the end of the day, this was canceled over Pride, and they yeah. would have just taken the Pride jerseys away if they could have and done everything else mm-hmm. for five players who have come out and been like, I can't wear your rainbow jersey for 20 minutes because I like that or whatever. Shut up. You don't get your religious bullshit night now either. So you know what? Like, fuck you. And I think it speaks to the ridiculousness of all this. Like, because of those people now we can't have childhood cancer night like you know what i mean it's just such a shame and it's just like grow up like it's just it's just such a shame go be a bigot really somewhere is. else somewhere else don't you know I just, i'm so tired of it dude i really am i'm like i'm it, this isn't in our notes and this is off script but i'm i'm so sick of it i really am if I didn't love hockey so much and feel the like burning desire to actually like advocate for hockey to be covered the way that I think that it should be, I would fucking boycott the shit out of the N- NHL right now. And I think that's what makes it sting a little bit more, especially for you and I. Like we're such big hockey fans. We grew up hockey fans. And, you know, I'm not even a part of the LGBTQ community, but I consider myself an ally. And we joke about that all the time, but I really do. And I think that hockey should be something that everybody can enjoy. And now it just kind of feels like, oh, well, you can't have it. Well, no one can. And it's like, well, okay, well, that's no fun. Like, but you know what? Fuck the NHL specifically for this, because now that I think about it, they highlighted the fact that they had Black Girl Hockey Club yep. at the Stanley Cup Finals. Yep. That's and what I'm saying, na- dude. They pick and choose, and it's not right. And now you're going to fucking pull this shit as if you haven't been bragging through the Stanley Cup Final that hockey is for everybody and highlighting them and sending them to a game and all of that fucking horse shit, and now pull this. I don't – I this is ho- – Sarah Griffin, front of the show. Front of the show. <laughs> We did that. Okay, basically, hockey is for nobody. Then, literally, and, all right, hockey is for straight white people. Sick, without cancer, without ever serving in the military. Like, fuck you guys, fuck you guys. So ridiculous. My neighbors are probably like, "What is this girl screaming about?" Right Same. now, my windows are open. Oh, well, I live in an apartment building. <laughs> I know. I live across from a boat club. <laughs> so I'm, all these, I'm watching all these people out here going on their boats. I'm just like, but yeah. So, so that was our hockey L segment for the, for the NHL. Yeah. 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 There is an L in the NHL for a reason, you dorks. Yep. Uh, NFL stuff. There's one sad thing, not sad thing, just annoying thing. We can go ahead and get out of the way just because <laughs> it's, so it's a annoying. point of, T- fuck Tyreek Hill too you know what yeah he- I just don't know why we're still having this conversation but fuck Tyreek Hill I think okay I'm gonna say it he's a piece of shit but of course during all the Jack Jones stuff it's like all right well Bill like the devil works hard but Bill Belichick works harder I don't know but charges have officially been pressed against him over like him hitting a guy who worked in a marina during like a father's day fishing trip I guess he was like if you don't know that tarpon are like a protected species in florida they are i guess he was like trying to hunt them or whatever and this guy said something to him about it and he hit him this is now his like third battery case or something like that one against a woman and a child and now another dude and whatever and you know i saw Jarrett bailey talking about this on twitter yesterday and while i do think some of his takes are absolutely ass no offense um he really nailed it on the head by saying that the NFL can't really preach anything at anybody or about gambling or these drug suspensions or whatever. When you have guys like Tyreek Hill who are repeat offenders for abusing not only women and children, but now fucking workers, I guess he told this guy that he could afford to buy him and that he should shut up. Like how disgusting. How does this guy play in the NFL still and have a fucking platform? Like this guy should be in jail. And if he wasn't an NFL player, he absolutely would be by now. Yep. I just, what is going on with these leagues? Adam Silver, please teach a TED Talk. 
Thank you. I would agree with that a hundred percent. I think that comparatively it's like the NFL is the wild, wild West, bro. Like, I don't know what's going on. And we, we can, t- we can jump into the Jack Jones situation real quick before yeah. we go into the, the second point here. Cause just, cause I think it kind of is an interesting comparison. Um, nine charges brought against How do you Jack bring Jones? a loaded gun in your fucking suitcase through TSA and I don't care if you, I don't like, people are saying he didn't know that it was there. Shut the fuck up. Nine gun charges. Nine. Listen, if you are from New England or you know Massachusetts at all, one of the strictest states in the country for gun laws, it is common knowledge that you cannot even go outside of your house unless you are you are a registered owner to carry, which you cannot get unless you are a former police officer, service member. It's very difficult to get your concealed carry permit in the state of Massachusetts. Beyond what is expected of you at an airport, which by the way is federal land once you step into that area, um, depending on what airport you go to. With the extended magazine, are you kidding me? Listen, I know I have my permit i have taken several cl- courses they, they are very clear about what you need to do when you check a gun at the airport never should you ever have anything loaded anywhere it should always be clear it should you can't always even be drive separated. with your gun loaded in states nope. you can have a gun nope. you have to nope. have them separated separated in a case in your back seat 100 as it should be um listen here's the thing you look up Jack Jones in the news, you see two perspectives. One, you see that the Patriots organization is livid about this situation. And I think that they are with that being said, I am shocked that he's still on the team. Um, I'm also shocked that the other perspective is that all is not lost and, you know, he might still be able to have a career and listen, if it is a mistake, listen, people make mistakes. I get it. It's a pretty big mistake to make. Obviously, hopefully you learn your lesson. I hope anyone that saw this learns that, that you cannot bring a firearm onto any aircraft or honestly, I wouldn't. That's even terrifying. It. Like that is so scary. And it's dangerous for him, too, because, you know, then you're you know, you you could be a target of security, obviously, as you should be. So well, it's just I, it's just a really weird situation. I don't know why it crossed his mind that he could do that. And why, too? He well, had so what's too weird? Long. The, no, the weirdest thing to me is the fucking extended magazine. That's insane. But here's the thing that's weird to me as well. So all these professionals, all these lawyers are saying that there is no way he doesn't do a minimum of two and a half years, right? So if that's the case, why hasn't he been released by the team? I don't know if it's because they think that there is a loophole because he has this fucking magic lady that's his lawyer or if they know something that we don't, which I don't think is possible because you brought two loaded weapons and an extended magazine to a fucking airport in your carry-on luggage without a permit. And I don't I don't see how you get out of that. So it's like either they, they know something that we don't or think something that we don't, or they are that fucking desperate because they know this team is going to be so bad that they would rather risk the embarrassment of another, another one of their players going to federal prison than the thought of having to have a rookie take all of these fucking snaps. Who, by the way, I think is going to be great in the NFL. If you listen to our draft segment, I have so much faith in Christian Gonzalez, but he's 20 years old. He is 20 years old. So I I mean as a Patriots fan I know how you feel but and I and I because of the political climate here I think I have a grasp on how most Patriots fans feel but like what do you think the general consensus is here like do you think that people would rather have him off the team because of these charges or are you do you think people are like well he didn't hurt anybody and he helps our team we need him because our depth at corner is so minuscule Yeah I think it's an I think it's an interesting point I think the issue is is larger than just the Patriots. I think if we look at a lot of the things that was the Tyreek thing, we talk about Adrian Peterson. There's a lot of examples of NFL players doing bad things and the organization turning their head and maybe not giving them the NBA treatment, as we discussed, about holding them accountable for their actions. 
I, you said another player, I was going to say, I can't help but get kind of PTSD from the Aaron Hernandez situation um, because I was so in New England country when that whole thing went down. He was only a couple houses away from me. His den was like literally down the street from me. Um, And that was just so shocking to us as a, as a fan base, because we had such a sense that Bill had this grip on the team that they were so, you know, um, almost like a, an army type mentality, right? Like they were, they were well behaved. They weren't in the news, you know, they kept everything really straight. And when that came out, it was kind of like, Oh, they might not have as much control of these young players that they think they have. And I, and I think that with the Jack Jones situation too, that's been so shocking because we went back to that mentality of, you know, Bill has these guys in, in a straight line. How, and then it's like, how could you, how could you let that happen? Like, how could, I don't think he's, happen? I don't think he's been that way for a long time because you look at fucking Antonio Brown, like Bill yeah. doesn't give a fuck. Well, that's what I'm saying. And I think that, I think that the Hernandez situation was the beginning of seeing that, that maybe we had that kind of built into our minds, but maybe that's not the reality of the situation. Um, I think the consensus is that, Listen, I, I I can't speak for everybody. I don't know. Maybe again, it's because of my experience with firearms. I don't know anyone that can look at that and be like, "Oh, well, it's just a mistake." Like everyone, like it's a common. It, that is not a common mistake. Like I, I'm sorry. Like that's a pretty. I don't know what has to go through your mind to bring a loaded firearm into a into an airport. And- if you, Kendra, you want to kick it off about the throwback jerseys for the Lions. I actually want to talk about the NFL news about them investing. Oh yeah, we skipped that. $526,000 in pain management solutions involving CBD. Why don't you just let your players smoke weed if you're actually going to try and get a solution from the same plant already, you fucking losers? Yeah. Hey, like, notes what? from the NBA. I don't like, understand why we still can't let our players smoke marijuana. It doesn't make any sense to me. Or I'm even sorry. just take edibles or use CBD or like not even CBD ointment, like marijuana ointment or like whatever. Like who gives a fuck? It's a plant. Like Jesus Christ, I'm so sick of having this conversation. How are you going to sit here and invest half a million dollars into pain management research of the same plant already and not just destigmatize it as a whole? You and losers. still have PED issues in your in your whole league. Like there are so many other things that they could be, you know, putting this money towards saving themselves, you know, from you know, I don't know. I I think it's great they're putting research into it. I agree. Just let them let them do what they need to do. But also the research is important. So hopefully I think they should be doing it on THC as well, to be honest, but that's just my personal opinion. Here's the thing. As someone who worked in college athletics for a long time and someone who dated D one athletes and beyond, they're all using Kratom anyway. Thank you. Thank you. Straight up. Like I wasn't going to say it, but that's what I was getting at. (laughs) They're all using Kratom anyway. So who gives a shit? Like, it's not going to like, it's so stupid. It's so stupid. Like, I just, it's insane to me. I know that that's just kind of a redundant point, but I got that notification from Shefty yesterday and I audibly laughed out loud. So that I just I had to bring it up, but Tyler, this is your NFL moment to shine. The Lions have yeah, some Tyler. New yeah, my my Lions news of the week. Uh, helmet was released. The alternate. I don't hate it. I know you don't like it as much, Kendra. I don't have much issue with the helmet. It's the jersey that they're going to wear it with is my problem. That I'm gray jersey is so ugly. No, I'm going to pull these. The I'm the opposite. In this. I like the jersey. I don't like the helmet. The gray jersey, gray pants is so bad. I hate I like it. So that, I like it. That that blue seems rather dark. Is it just because they have it on the black background? It's probably just because they have it on the back black background. But it's like it's a matte helmet. blue. It's the the logo's a little high. I don't know why it's so high on the head. That blue um, doesn't look right to me with that gray jersey. It doesn't. No, look- it looks bad. It would look so much better with a white jersey. Whoever designs the Pistons gear should really take over the Lions. I don't like. Shit. I don't love the Pistons gear. To be honest, I love the Pistons. I shit. like the vintage Pistons uh, piston stuff. The t- I like today's the Pistons. Pistons stuff. Like, I just I like love. the the overall marketability of the Pistons logo. But the gray colors. jersey, it just feels very like XFL Power Ranger. I hate it. I, that's why I like it. I hate it. 
I, I'm a white jersey guy. I feel that way about the helmet. I think you're jersey. both arguing about the same thing. I think you both just hate the uniform. I <laughs> like the helmet. Is very I like the helmet. I, 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 I like the I uniforms. Think. I don't like the helmet. Tyler I think I have to agree with Kendra. I think I have to agree with Kendra. I just hate the gray. I like the gray. Gray is so bad. I want it on a white jersey with blue pants. I think that blue is awful. Well, I think you're awful. <laughs> some Dude. ratatouille bullshit <laughs> some ratatouille bullshit let remy cook um i have a couple f1 notes there's no f1 this week i just gotta say one i'm, so I'm sick of i'm me too one i'm sick of the dutch anthem give max right, a right, trophy right. already so we can move on players can move teams i'm done with this season i'm Fuck so it. bored i'm so bored i'm so bored let daniel ricardo cook let anyone other than Max Verstappen and Alonzo come. No, no, true. And, well, I mean, yeah, basically, but... Like, how is Max Verstappen, in my opinion, the most unlikable human being on the face of the planet? And Alonzo, Mr. 40-year-old man going through his Brett Favre phase, like, ruling F1 right now. I like Max as a person. I love that he's, like, so mean and he loves cats and is a stepdad. I get why people don't like him, but I... I don't know. The cats are kind of cool. Um, w for Ferrari fans last weekend, and there was Yuki drama. Yeah, what is that? I didn't hear. I don't understand the, Yuki drama. the W for Ferrari fans because as a Ferrari fan, I had a shitty weekend last week. No, okay, so yeah, they had like some <laughs> shitty penalties, but they still finished top five back to back. Like that's a du- they're th- that's a W for Ferrari fans after you know the Charles Tire situation and Carlos's grid penalty. That's a W for Ferrari fans. Yeah, listen, I was super you bummed. Got points. I was super bummed with the qualifying situation. Obviously, tough, qual- tough, stressful qualifier. Kendra and I were t- like live texting each other the entire time. Like, just the rain coming into the forecast was just, it was terrifying and it was really intense. Um, it was a win that Charles was able to bump up. I believe he, he started. 11 yeah i'm gonna say he was like nine or ten or something yeah he made it after penalties probably nine or ten and then he ended up in fourth so i was happy with that um and yeah i'm just kind of bored of the the max domination here i think it was really interesting (laughs) i was in the same breath really shocked by sans's performance considering he's driving a literal spaceship <laughs> i don't understand or no who am i thinking of checko 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 what the fuck dude what <laughs> daniel ricardo cook so uh, i don't know i think we're gonna get some i'm excited for the off season to get all the tea because i think this is gonna be a very tea filled off season we're gonna have some shift well, in we're gonna so have he, some new have you seen that Mick Schumacher might take over for Logan Sargent before the season even ends. I would love that. Dude, Schumacher supremacy. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> um, so Tyler, the Yuki drama. Yuki got in a little Fucking bit of trouble last week. Charles Leclerc. A little bit of trouble with my boy. <laughs> Do Charles, him and Charles have beef? Charles called Yuki a dickhead. <gasps> oh, he did. Thank you. He did. Wow. And a lot of I mean, I'm standing with think, my boy Charles. I hate you guys. A lot of people were saying that Yuki was impeding people, but he like... He was, Kendra. He was. <laughs> just let my short king cook, all right? Um, There Charles was a lot of impeding even in that qualifier. The car. There was a lot of Yeah, impeding. it's the... Re- Dude, there was a fucking tsunami, okay? Yeah, it was there was a lot of impeding. Uh, Sans Carlos Sans for Ferrari impeded like literally the entire field. Did he? <laughs> I don't did know, he get but, a three grid penalty or a five grid penalty? Five? I can't remember. But what I, I can tell five. you, and this is my piece of tea from last weekend as a Ferrari fan, I am done with the team management. Obviously, their communication is god awful. I'm not making excuses for Sans. But from what I was understanding and how I understand F1, you're going so fast that you rely on a lot of your your team to communicate what's going on on the rest of the track with you. So the fact that no one was like, hey, move out of the way. There are I don't know. I think that that was all Carlos Sainz's fault. I, I agree with Pierre. I'm on Pierre's team. And I like I love Carlos Sainz. I don't love 
that he potentially cheated on his girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> but as a driver, a as a driver, I think that Ferrari should prioritize him sometimes because I we don't have to get into all this right now. <laughs> I know that this is this is a lot for Haley. We'll have an F1 show. We'll have an F1 yeah. show. All right. All right. All right. We're we're moving off of this. We're closing the show. Sorry, I told guys. you we would talk about sports. I promised that we would. But tweets of the week. Tyler, what the fuck is this? I don't even know. I just it found it last night. Um, no, we were Miriam the Webster, the dictionary people, they just got a pretty sick ass Twitter account. It's pretty funny. Sick ass brunch. All right. Why is it? Why can you oh, no, give they me were just... some examples? No, not really. They were just tweeting about the NBA draft last night. It was kind of funny. Okay. So that's my tweet of the week. That was a Tylerism. Yeah. Um, my tweets of the week are that Mariah Mills is no longer on Twitter. Do we think she's going to Truth Social bah, to spread her bah, truth? Bah. Q taps for Mariah Mills. Yeah. I think that it was definitely the fact that she threatened revenge porn. Yeah, yeah definitely not right. a good look, Mariah. No, can't be doing that, Mariah. We, you can't be doing that. <laughs> I don't know about that. Cannot. Law. We don't stand. We there's don't stand. No. There's a there's a line you can't cross, and she crossed it. Yeah, she crossed many a line. I would argue. <laughs> Is it bad that I had her tweet notifications? <laughs> no, I'm not shocked at all. You were all in on the Mariah Mills tea. Tyler As was sent. I, so. Tyler sent the account suspended. And what's that like Chris Pratt where he's like, yeah, <laughs> that was me. Parks and Rec, yeah. <laughs> that was me. Um, Haley, do you have a tweet of the week? Yeah, my tweet of the week is going to go out to a friend of the show, Steph Smalls, who tweeted out the other day uh, her love and appreciation for the song Rich Girl by Daryl Hall and John Oates. And I agree. Okay. Right. Good one. Good tweet. All notes. I got their names wrong, I'm sure, but that's, that's the vibe. Of party. Going. This Zuckerberg versus Elon fight, dude. What in the 2023 fever fucking dream is going on here? I got a notification that DraftKings had odds for this yesterday and that they actually are both doing this. And that fucking Elon Musk might have Andrew Tate training him. And I just, I don't, I think that it should be a cage match. Fight to the death. And then and they both lose only, and they both not, die. No. One of you has <laughs> to die and you have to give the other one your social media platform. Oh, mm. interesting. I like that steak. Mm. Here's the thing. So you die and you don't get your social anymore. Can you correct me if I'm wrong? I think I've seen on Twitter that Zuckerberg is like, ju- he's into judo. Zuck, Zuck, Zuck is in a lot, into a lot of the he has a black belt. Yeah. Yeah. He has a black belt. Okay. He, he's he's a little bit of a martial artist. I've been trying to get more into martial arts like over the last couple of weeks. I haven't told either of you that, but like I'm really trying to like get into it and learn the differences. Uh that shit's crazy. And I don't think that Elon could beat him if he's a we, black belt. No, I you don't. You should have I, taken I think Zuck washes. Easy. You should have taken my women's self-defense course that I taught as my senior thesis. I would have loved to do that. Mm. I'm honestly so mad I didn't do that. Damn it, dude. Yeah, if you didn't know that I'm a black belt, shout out to me, I guess. I don't know. But I am very intrigued by this because I think that they should have to fight to the death. I would like tickets. So whenever that is death. organized, we would like to be um, there. Tyler. I do think it should be no holds barred, though. I think we should get some some steel chairs involved, some <laughs> ladders. It could be a ladder match. Do you think this is going to be the WWE. most... I was going to say, gonna do, you wanna come out of the, do you want to come out of the closet, Tyler? I've never been in the closet, Haley, about did, did you my know about fandom this, of Kendra? WWE. I've always been a WWE guy. Okay, but here's I, the thing. I we know see that... see if I got any merch around. I don't think... I do. I have a WWE t-shirt that I'm supposed to wear a, on the show. My wardrobe used to be exclusively WWE shirts. I find it fascinating that you were a WWE super fan. Yeah, Almost no, as fascinating as you playing hockey is crazy yeah. to me yeah i was convinced Here's... when i was when i was a boy that i could be a wwe superstar <laughs> he looked into he looked into the school I into yeah i he looked, looked into in. going to wrestling school. yeah no it's deep it's yeah. deep yeah i'm still convinced if i like trained for several years i could do it <laughs> I think as I could if you it. didn't start lifting two weeks before we were all supposed to go on a beach vacation <laughs> Hey, shout out Tyler, because I still haven't been to the gym since then. <laughs> Wait, it. here's the thing, though. Like, I know Zuck has got, like, 
the moves or whatever, but Elon's so much bigger than that little wimp. It's insane. Oh, I think Zuck's got that psycho thing uh, to him, though. How tall is, what's his face? Zuck is just so skinny. He's he's crazy. I get a vibe that that man's just absolutely nuts. What's the wingspan? He gives me, what is that movie where that guy's like, that wasn't me, that was Patricia. That's Spongebob. Oh, Split. Yes, that yeah. movie is like Zuckerberg He's got split vibes. personality. Yeah, yeah, totally Zuckerberg vibes. I can totally yeah, that's, that's, that's see that's that. Good. Yeah, that's a good yeah. comparison. Good comparison, Kendra. <laughs> that's a win that wasn't you. me. That was Patricia. I did, did. You not catch that Tyler thought you were referencing the SpongeBob episode where yeah. they dress up. Where Patrick. they dress up yeah. Patrick as a girl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that this is going to be the most watched fight in the history of the world? No. No. I don't. I want Zuckerberg really to fight Jake Paul. That would, is I what think I that want. would sell more than. Uh, I want I think, Mark Zuckerberg. The social media to fight CEOs Jake Paul. fighting each other. Who? How did this even start? Who? What think, the fuck? Elon talks nonstop shit, so I guarantee I think it was, it was a. Um, no, I think it was a. a Dana White situation. I think he was talking, being interviewed. Yo, not my man. Say what you want about Dana White. My man is always looking to make coins, so I would not be shocked if he was the mastermind behind this idea. All right. Um, it's Tyler's favorite time of the show. Dun, 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 dun. We need to come up with a horoscope song. This is where we read Tyler's horoscope today. Um. <laughs> Does it say I'm going to be a professional Oh, God, wrestler? this is already bad. This is already so bad. I'm not Tyler's ready. hell is only ever being able to feel lukewarm emotions. <laughs> My hell is mm. your own mind prison. True. Um. Yeah. I think so. I'm I just in so hell are you right living now. in hell, Tyler? Because you're constantly lukewarm. Yes. I'm very crisis. lukewarm. You're Luke Bryan warm, if you will. Yeah. Um. I'm trying to read the rest of it. You're, it says you're feeling abrasive and you don't feel secure enough right now to state an opinion that differs from mine. T- <laughs> I mean, we did have beef about the helmet. It says ah, that I should, the helmet. It beef. says that it says that I should play everything you say back to me backwards. Huh? I don't know. What does that mean, Moon? <laughs> Oh, that's so good. Is there a secret Tyler, message in my words? Tyler's hell is lukewarm emotions. <laughs> yeah, that's just me daily. That's just you. That's yeah. a great band name. Put that in the band Luke name. Warm lukewarm emotions. emotions. Lukewarm emotions. Yes. That is a good one. Yep. That bringing is it back to the top so of the show, good. ladies and gentlemen. That's what we call a callback. Right. That is... All right, we got the band names, or they're popping, dude. Mm-hmm. I'm honestly very impressed with that list of band names. That's a hard list. <laughs> Thank you. Popping. Thank you. Wet jeans slaps. Wet, Wet jeans, jeans is incredible. Is probably incredible. the best. That's that's is where it the with money a Z. Is. I'm gonna end? run it back. It I'm gonna be run with it back. A Z. These are my these are my band names. Weak old ham. <laughs> Shitty old man logic. <laughs> Wet jeans. Dead rat in the trash and lukewarm emotions. I think so. Shitty old man logic. I think we could just drop the shitty old part and it just be called man logic. <laughs> I think that would be harder than or drop the logic and be shitty old man. Yeah, either one. We got to shorten that one up a little because logic's kind of already taken. I don't want to. No, step we on can do toes. man logic. Um, I think. Does anybody have any other closing thoughts? Uh, you have the U.S. Women's National Team roster release. Hashtag slay. Hashtag girly pops. Hashtag Alyssa Thompson continuing to be a badass bitch and missed her graduation, but now she gets to play in the Women's World Cup. So I missed my, my graduation closing... too. <laughs> That's Tyler's closing <laughs> thought. Yep. My closing thought about this is that you should mute me on twitter now because during the women's world cup i'm about to be so insufferable when does that start next week i think two weeks week Week and a half like 12 days or something it's coming get ready i can't wait i'm so excited anything else i hope everybody listening has a good week like kendra said at the top of the show if you're going through medical stuff personal stuff mental stuff totally get it we've all been there keep your head up we're in the middle of summer so try and take some time for yourself a little work life balance and i hope everyone has a great week keep on sipping y'all we'll see you next week
Peace out, gang. Bye.